Hello and welcome back to K. Escona Designs, my YouTube channel. So excited you're here. We are about to start another Marathon Society sewing marathon. I love doing these marathons. They're so much fun. It gives me a chance to sew other patterns from other designers and provide you with some tips on how I like to do it. I don't always follow the instructions, and this time I definitely veered off the path. Uh, this pattern is the Book Bestie from Carolina Little Stitches, and I've made, I don't even know how many at this point. I love making this, and the designer does provide a lot of different options for the flap, or, or different closures, I should say, for the Book Bestie. Um, this version is something I made uh, which is a little bit of a difference from what the pattern is, but this is, it's a coffin. <laughs> I made a coffin flap because who doesn't want all things coffin, right? Um, so this is my version of Kayla's pattern. And for me, all year is spooky season. So I figured why not try to make a coffin flap? Um, so I'm super, super excited about this one. Uh, I did get permission from the designer to do this and to offer this flap to you completely free on my website. So you'll also see a link to her pattern on my site. So my pattern includes the, the adjusted flap and also this little template to show you where to stitch the actual like coffin shape. But this is how cute it is. I have to show you. Look how fun. Look how fun that is. So it's a big coffin. It's on the flap. And it just closes. I used a magnet, uh, magnetic snap to, to close it. So uh, we're going to go through all of the steps. And what I did here, the other um, kind of fun thing that I did, it's not necessarily has anything to do with the pattern. But what I also did was I am showing you in the tutorial how to do a fun little badge around like your logo tag out of cotton woven so this is all this is like an applique and there's no raw edges so if you are using cotton woven and you want to do something fun like this had a circle so it's like oh that'd be really fun if i put my logo tag there in the middle of the circle and stitch it on the inside um so i do show you how to do that too this is a really really easy pattern to make um, it's really a breeze so hopefully this is going to be really helpful to help you if you're a production sewist um, kind of get through this really quickly i did use minimal amount of stabilizer so i will mention that is i did alter it slightly where i didn't use a lot of stabilizer so this isn't super structured it's kind of a more loose version of the pattern anyway i hope you enjoy this one i'm super excited to show you how to do it Let's start by reviewing all of the pieces that you're gonna need for this. It is going to vary slightly from the pattern. So the body pieces, in the pattern it tells you to cut out four pieces of fleece. I'm gonna use two and see if it's still enough structure. Um, I've made this before with four and it worked fine um, just because of the way I'm gonna do it today. I'm gonna see if two will work. So I have two pieces. These are cut about um, half an inch smaller than the rest of the pattern pieces. So I trimmed half an inch from all around um, all four sides. So there's two of those. And then you're going to have two lining pieces. So these are my two lining pieces. I'm going to use a black polka dot. And then two exterior. So these are my exterior pieces. These are all cotton woven. I believe this cotton woven is from JNR Edwards. The polka dots are from Joanne. And then I'm going to use the self adhesive uh, fleece, and this is from Fabric Therapy. I find the self adhesive stuff just makes my life easier. So then for the flap, um, so for the flap, I'm going to be using the standard. Uh, size so the standard flap is around this big this is what I wanted to show you kind of the difference and then the flap that I I modified is still the same width but it's a little bit of a different shape and it's much bigger so this is going to be our flap so this is the original flap this is the one that I've included 
in the link below in the description. And then I cut out um, another piece of this um, uh, self-adhesive fleece. And again, this is also about half an inch smaller all the way around on all sides. And then also a piece of Decaville that is mirrored, um, same size. Then I have two pieces for my flap. So two pieces for my flap, make sure they are mirrored. So you have one that has the point here on the right. When you flip it over, there's another piece that has one on the left. Then I cut yet another piece that is reversed. So you're gonna need one that's cut the regular way, flip over your pattern piece. So this one is cut this way. So that's one piece. So you just need one of those. Then you're gonna need two more pattern pieces or two more pieces of fabric cut like this. Okay, so you'll have three total. So two that are reversed that are mirrored like this and then one that is just the regular the regular way, okay? And then you will need, I'm gonna be using some snaps today. Um, these are from Saya Swag. So I'm using, I think these are 14 millimeter snaps. You just need one set. Then the last thing that you're gonna need is a scrap of fabric. Um, as long as it's around the same size um, as the stitch template that I've included as, as this coffin, um, it, this is probably way too big, but I had, a, I had just a scrap of it left. So you just need a scrap of that. And I'm going to show you something that's kind of fun. We'll see if it turns out okay. So I am going to take a piece of cotton woven. This is my bag label. I just use double-sided tape to stick it on. I'm gonna to attempt to make a bag label out of cotton woven in this circle shape that I'm gonna put on the interior of the bag. So I needed just kind of a scrap of any fabric and then what you want as the front of it. Um, and we'll just set those aside. Okay, so we're gonna start with these pieces first. So this is the, the label. Um, so again, I grabbed a piece of cotton woven from the exterior and I lined up my bag label, put a little piece of double-sided tape underneath so it doesn't shift. And I'm just going to, this is not lined by the way, there is no interfacing or anything. And I'm just gonna stitch all the way around my bag label itself. Um, probably using about a 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around um, the entirety of the label. And then I'll come back and show you what's next. Okay, so I went ahead and just stitched around the label. Maybe you can kind of see that. So that's done. So I'm gonna try to mimic this circle so what I did on the back side, I was trying to decide like where I wanted to stitch, but I did draw a stitch line where I wanted to stitch. So with right sides together, you're gonna put these two pieces of fabric together and then stitch along the line that I drew. Um, you are gonna go ahead and back stitch. Don't worry about it, it'll be fine it's okay to close all of this out. So stitch all the way around and then we'll move on. Okay, so once you stitch along your line, it should look like this. We're just gonna trim the edges. You can use pinking shears or just regular scissors. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm just using some embroidery scissors to cut along. I'm probably leaving, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch or so. Okay, so then once you're done, go to the back side and just try to like separate the fabric a little bit from the front. I just pull it up with my fingers. 
and I'm going to cut a little slit in here just so I can get my scissors in and I am going to cut um, maybe like a like little X or little plus sign. I'm not going to cut all the way to the edges. I'm cutting maybe a quarter of an inch away ish. Just enough so that you can get your fingers in here and now you're going to turn it so everything is right side out. I like to use, you know, any type of a turning tool to kind of push out my curves just so that they're a little more smooth. You can use your fingers too. Okay, that's probably about as smooth as I'm going to get it just with using tools. I'm going to go and take this to the iron to try to smooth all of this out. Then this is going to become my bag label. Okay, so once you have it ironed, go ahead and grab some double-sided tape. You just put a couple of pieces down. This is just to hold it in place. I'm not using very sticky double-sided tape. I think this is from Weft and Warp. It's probably like a medium stickiness, I would say. It doesn't tend to gum up my needle, so I like to use that. All right, so what I did is I just measured an inch and a half down on an interior piece. And I'm gonna just align it right about there. And then I'm gonna top stitch all the way around. Okay, so once you have this all stitched on, we can move on to adding in our fusible fleece. So I like to put the fleece on my interior panels versus my exterior panels. So go ahead and adhere your fleece to both panels. Okay, so I'm using this sticky fusible fleece from, or self-adhesive fleece, I should say, from Fabric Therapy. So all I need to do is stick it down. Okay, so let's move on to the flap. So I have a front piece, a back piece, and then another back piece. Okay, so my first piece, I did not interface for the front. One of the back pieces, go ahead and put some Decaville light on and the other piece leave alone. So let's work on one of the back pieces first. We're gonna put the snaps on. So the snaps that I'm using are magnetic snaps. So there is a washer, um, a male piece, and then also there is um, a female piece too. There we go. Okay, so we needed two washers, male and a female. We're gonna use the male side, I think, for this back piece, so you can put the other one aside. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you are going to measure about, I think I did an inch and a half, hold on one second. Yes, an inch and a half from the point um, is kind of where the center is, so I just mark that real quick. I'm gonna take my washer and this does not need to be exact. And I'm gonna place it, I don't know, around where that center mark is. And then I'm gonna make my other markings on this so that I can put my holes. So I'm going to place a mark here and here. Then using scissors, you can use seam ripper, whatever. 
go ahead and cut that slit out. And then take your snap and push the prongs through to this side. And then you're gonna take your washer, place it over that, and then just push it down, push down the little prongs and your snap is here. Okay, so your snap is in. So then what you can do is you can take your piece of fleece. Now remember, I'm using this um, self-adhesive fleece, so it's sticky. Oh, this is not the piece that I wanted. Sorry. This is the piece that I wanted. I cut out the wrong one before. <laughs> So if you do that, well, you can always use it for something else. Okay, so go ahead and peel back the backing. And we're just gonna line it up. So this is actually gonna cover your prongs. You could also use a piece of duct tape um, to cover the prongs so they don't poke through to the other side of the fabric in your on your flap. So I'm just gonna line it up with my Decoville and just kind of smooth this out. So now I have a nice sturdy piece. So this is the underside. Okay, so there's still a front. So there is a front that's gonna go on here where we're gonna put our coffin. And then there is another kind of piece that we're gonna play with. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this part with the snap aside for a moment. So this is our front right and then this is the other piece we cut out so we're going to put right sides together and just line them up they do not have to be perfect this is just really so that you can draw accurately and you can accurately place it and then you're going to take your stitch template that i included so that stitch template is meant to be about an inch away from each of the top the bottom right and left so Luckily for me, I have a ruler that is exactly one inch. So I'm going to just kind of line this up. I'm going to use a pattern weight just to kind of keep this where I want it. So that's about an inch. Is this about an inch? Oh, actually, I'm pretty darn good. I'm just going to get it lined up as best as you can so it's not crooked when you are stitching. I can probably get there and there. How am I at the top? Good at the top and I'm good at the bottom. Okay, so now that you've got everything nice and straight, take a pen, a piece of chalk, whatever you think is gonna show up. I'm actually not sure what's gonna show up on here. So I'm gonna try to see if chalk does. Mm, sort of showing up for me and just trace all the way around actually going to try and see if this choco liner works a little bit better. I always forget that I have this. Yeah, I can see that much better. Okay, so if you have a few pins, just throw them in there just so it doesn't shift when you stitch. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna stitch along the line that we just drew. So stitch all the way around all the sides. Okay, so now that this is all stitched, I know it's very difficult to see, but there are stitches all around where I drew. We're gonna cut basically um, 
maybe half an inch or so away from your stitch line on the inside here. So you can do this with scissors or you can do this with a rotary cutter, I'm deciding. I think I might do it with a rotary cutter just because uh, it might be easier. So it does not have to be super clean. Just cut around where you think you should. I may actually have to trim this out more. <laughs> Probably cutting it way too far away, but that's fine. I can always trim. I think I got the most of them. Okay. So it should look like this. So what we're gonna do is in the corners, you're gonna cut right into that corner without cutting your stitches. Just as close as you can get to that stitch line, just don't cut your stitches. You're going to do that in all your corners. Okay, so we've cut them all. Now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna turn this so that now, you basically you're making a facing. So you want wrong sides together all the way around. Press it down with your fingers, take it to the iron. I like to iron mine. Just pressing it down. You can use the seam roller too. That could also help. So just keep pressing all the way around. Okay, so once it's all pressed down, I did hit it with an iron. You will go ahead and grab your scrap piece of fabric and lay this on top. So this is gonna be your little coffin itself. So just line this up. Try to get it as centered as best as you can. If you have a directional print, make sure it's going in the, the way that you would like for it to go. Um, that way it's, it looks the way you want. I tend to get kind of particular about how I want this. <laughs> so do what you can to kind of center it. Um, if you have a non-directional print, that's even better. So what I'm gonna do with this is I am going to take, um, show you the whole thing. I'm going to take a glue stick and I'm just going to on the underside just glue all the way around and then I'm going to hit it with an iron again and it will glue baste it um, so it kind of dries out the glue and so it stays put while I sew. I use just a regular old like any old glue stick will do um, like a Elmer's craft and bond I think is what I have and I also have just like a washable school glue. Any of these are fine. Whatever you find on sale at the store is totally fine. Um, keep in mind that the, the purple one, it does, when it dries, it does, does dry clear, but I always get worried <laughs> about that when I'm using um, lighter fabrics. So I tend not to use it on lighter fabrics because I just don't know. So just glue all the way around on the underside and press it down with your fingers and keep going all the way around and then iron it. I just wanted to show you before I start stitching what this looks like after you use a dry iron. Make sure it's a dry iron when you're ironing. It's pretty stuck. Okay, so it basically is drying out the glue so it stays in put. 
stays in place and that way when you're stitching you're not stitching through something sticky it's just dry glue so your needle should go through it fine so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch along the inside sorry yeah along this uh, the window here all the way around and I'm probably going to pull my threads through to the back so it looks pretty rather than back stitching okay so here's what it looks like with all the stitching. So it's this pretty purple stitching all the way around. Okay, so then your last step to complete this panel is to trim everything. So I like to keep as much away from my seam allowances as possible. So this front polka dot, I'm gonna leave alone. I am not gonna trim anything all of the material underneath this lining piece and this piece I'm going to trim so that it's smaller shorter than this piece so trim it um, I don't know I'm probably going to go around quarter of an inch away from the stitching and that seam so now you have, here's the front, here's the underside. So do that all the way around. Okay, so this is what your flap should now look like. This is the back side. So see how it's nice and trim, and there's just one layer that you're gonna be sewing through for that flap to complete the flap. Okay, so to complete the flap, we're gonna take both flap pieces, we're gonna put them right sides together, and you're gonna go ahead and stitch this along four sides, leaving this top part, this top main part is gonna stay open. So you're gonna stitch all the way down, across, up here, and then stopping at the top here. So one, two, three, four sides, you will stitch, you will leave this open. I use a quarter of an inch seam allowance when I make these. I know the pattern has a different seam allowance, but that is how I measured the flap. So I will go ahead and stick with a quarter of an inch. Okay, so once everything is stitched, leaving this part open, go ahead and trim your corners. So by that I just mean Go ahead and just cut across those corners just to reduce the bulk. Just don't cut your stitching. And then what you'll do is turn this right side out. And you can use a turning tool or a chopstick or something to poke out your corners. Just be careful you do not accidentally put a hole in your corners. I have done that before. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna top stitch along those same uh, edges that you just stitched. So just these, leave this top open. Okay, so this is what the flap should look like. So all of my top stitching is all pretty on my edge. It's a really pretty purple um, thread. It's looking really good. I think we're in good shape. Okay, so now you're gonna take your flap, the one, you know, this finished flap, and an exterior piece, um, this piece and your other piece, all of the pieces, the exterior and interior, will need, you'll, you'll mark your centers, so just fold this in half and grab a pair of scissors and right at this spot here, um, just go ahead and cut a little bit um, into that to mark your centers. And you're gonna do that on this and 
on your flap. So I already marked my center here for the exterior and my flap, and I'm gonna match my centers together. Um, so place right sides together and line up your center marks, and then you're gonna kind of clip there at the top to hold it together. And then we're gonna baste um, the top using an eighth inch seam allowance from one end of the flap to the other end of the flap. So now everything is complete with the stitching there at the top. Um, so it's nice and secure. So I just have my, my basting stitches there. So now you're gonna take your other exterior and you're gonna just make sure it's facing the right way. So the center should be facing each other and then you're going to flip over one of the sides on top. So right sides together, matching kind of the center points. Um, I think I might place it this way, it might work a little bit better. So my other exterior pieces on top match your centers so that everything lines up. Um, I think it might be easier for me to see it maybe the other way, just so I can see where everything is going. I'm gonna go ahead and match up that top there. Um, and just make sure it's centered. So I'm just gonna align this with my cutting mat. That way it's nice and centered. Okay, so we're gonna place this right sides together about an inch and a half down. So about an inch and a half from the top there and just match your center piece, your center marks, so you know it's straight. So then grab some chalk and without move shifting your fabric too much, um, lift up the top piece that you just placed down and put some chalk over your snap. So over that middle part of the snap. And we're gonna see if we can get this to transfer over to the fabric so we know where to place our snap. So align it again. And then just press with your finger over the snap to try to transfer the mark. And I can think I can see it, but I might wanna grab a pen to mark it clearly for myself. just so I can see it. Might be a little hard to see this just because it's on rainbow on rainbow fabric. I think I can oh wait there it is. I think I I think I see it. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this a little bit clearer for myself with my chalk in that spot because I'll probably lose it again. So just mark that there and that center mark is where the middle of your washer is going to end up um, going so you'll be able to kind of line things up with your snap there. The other thing you may want to do is grab a piece of um, Decoville light. Whatever scrap you have is fine. Cut like a square. This is going to go underneath the snap just to help to stabilize it when you place your snap in there. Um, I like to put it right underneath and you know it'll just kind of be lined up um, again with the washer. So the washer would go here, you have your deck underneath. The other thing you may wanna do is grab like a piece of foam or a fleece, whatever you've got that's maybe even a little thicker and place um, another square of that underneath your snap for stability. Foam is probably gonna to be too thick, but it's what I have. But we're gonna try this out and see if it works and how it looks. So now you'll have these two pieces together for right um, underneath. Okay, so now go ahead and take your washer and line it up with the dot we just made and make some marks just like we did on the other one. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. We are just going to take the some scissors make some slits in the fabric okay so here's the difference you are going to take your snap and put it through the right side to the back and on the back side 
I am going to make some marks on my Decaville, just like I did on the front there, and make some more slits. So you can fit your prongs through. And then I'm going to stick my foam in. I don't usually make slits in the foam because it kind of goes in by itself. Okay, put your washer on top. And then just bend your prongs down. And you have your snap. Alrighty. So now your snap is on. Okay, so now we're going to assemble interior and exterior. So let's start with the exteriors first. Take one exterior piece and then place the other exterior piece right sides together. And now we're going to sew along the left side, the right side, and the bottom piece. You do not need to sew any of these corners. So you're gonna leave these open. So again, it's just the left, right side, and bottom. And you'll do this for your exterior pieces and your interior. Here's the difference with the interior pieces. So with the interior pieces, you'll still do right sides together. Only with these, you're gonna leave an opening. Um, you're going to leave an opening down here at the bottom. I would say maybe a good like six or seven inches so that you can turn it. So I'll probably stitch from here to about here, here to about here, and then leave this big opening here. And I'll stitch on the left and also on the right. And then that'll give us our turning hole. And I'll be stitching with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now that they're together and sewn on the sides and on the bottom, you notice that I did leave a pretty large gap in the bottom of the lining pieces. Now what you're going to do is we're going to box the corners. So here, let me show you on this one because it's probably easier to see. So what you're going to do is just put your hand inside and try to bring each, the bottom and one of the sides together. And just kind of pull at the, the sides as much as you can to try to get it to lay flat. You're gonna to try to match up your seam allowance or seams here, okay? And we're gonna butterfly these. So one's gonna go one way, the other seam is gonna go the other so that you can reduce bulk in that area. So it should be pretty flat like that. Just clip it in place. And we'll do this on all four corners. So again, get your hand in there to kind of poke it out and then pull at the sides. I find pulling at the sides the easiest thing to do. Now we had, I'm gonna have my, my seams facing the same way. Just trying to line it up here. Okay, and we'll do this on the exterior as well. And then what you're going to do is along this flat side here, this straight edge, you're going to stitch this at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You're going to do that for this side, this side, and then also for your lining pieces. Okay, so now your corners should be boxed. So this is what it should look like. That's the other side. And then same with your lining. Okay, so we're going to trim a little bit at the top. So both top edges um, go ahead maybe about mm, an inch or so down, kind of at an angle cut towards from the outside towards the thread to kind of give it a little bit of an angled cut. This will just help um, reduce bulk once you are top stitching. So you just want to trim that off. The less bulk you can have, the, the easier it's going to be to sew. Okay, 
So this is what the interior and exterior should now look like. Okay, so now you're gonna take your lining. I'm gonna turn this to the right side out. It does not have to be pretty, just get it. Get out. Okay. So now you're gonna fit this into your, the exterior into the interior. You're gonna need to, and I'm gonna have to figure out how I want, I want this to look. Okay, so I think I want, thinking about it, so this is my front. I believe I need it this way, because I do have a back where my label is. I think I want mine this way so that, yes, okay. Think about it. So go ahead and make sure, I, I notice my flap is out. Put your flap back inside. Okay, so now it's nice and lined up. Again, like those center notches that we cut before, you can line those up to find your center. And just make sure it's all centered. So go ahead and clip around the edges or pin, however you know you like to kind of hold things in place while you sew. And what we're gonna do is you're going to stitch all along this opening at a quarter of an inch, okay? So all along this top edge, all the way around, all the way, all the way, all the way. And we're gonna be using our hole to turn, okay? So this entire thing should be stitched together. So go ahead and hold that either together with pins or clips. Some people don't use anything at all and stitch that seam. Make sure you back stitch. One thing that I wanted to mention, so I have all of mine clipped together is you definitely want to match up your side seams. So make sure that the exterior and interior seams are matching as well as you can get them to match. I find that with cotton woven, which is what I'm using, it can stretch a little. So you have to kind of play with it sometimes if you did end up stretching it when you were stitching. So I have my clips facing this way because on my machine, I don't have like a cylinder arm, I just have a domestic. I'm gonna have to lay my bag this way to sew. So I'm actually gonna have my presser foot here. So my presser foot's just gonna keep going and I'm just gonna be moving my bag in a circle as I'm stitching. So I'm gonna keep moving it this way all the way around, which is why I have my clips facing the way there because this is, these are the type of clips that have a flat side and have a rounded side. My rounded side is facing up where my presser foot will be. Okay, so we're all stitched together. So this whole top part has been stitched. Now go ahead and open up your opening and pull out the exterior. Push it through the hole. Push out your points. If you need to use a turning tool, go ahead. And let's just make sure before we close this up that everything's fitting. So I'm gonna push my lining back inside. is okay. It does. When there's a book in here, it's gonna kind of mold to that. So this is meant to curve, or sorry, be folded a little bit. So I just kind of put that in place. But oh, so cute. Look how adorable this is.
It is such a fun little coffin. I'm super excited about this one. Okay, so it looks great. So there are two things that we're gonna do. One is we're going to, and I think I'm gonna wait to close up the hole. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch first. We're gonna top stitch all along the top here. What I like to do, and I wanted to show you, is I do like to clip everything in place because you will notice up here, like I have a, a contrasting lining and I really don't want that to show. So I will either iron or clip. I'm a little lazy and I'm not gonna iron it. <laughs> but clip all along the top just to hold it in place. See, this started like rolling in on itself. So just get it to where you want it to be and add a clip. So this will help while you're stitching all the way along the top. And you're just gonna top stitch this, including the back. So I will show you what I mean. So you're also gonna, so as you're stitching all of this, you're also gonna stitch this back part. So here's how I like to do it. I'm gonna turn this back so that the lining is facing out. Because remember what I mentioned before, because of the way my machine is, I have to lay it flat and I'm gonna be stitching along this side and kind of rotating my project all the way through. So that means here as well. So make sure you just kind of press this down. If you're using cotton woven, I like to use pins just to kind of keep this down where I want it. It can be a little bit of a struggle if you're using self-adhesive fleece to pin it in place, but it, it works. You can pin it. So you're just gonna clip all the way around, pin where you can, and then we're gonna top stitch along this edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Um, I do back stitch this. You can also pull your threads through, but no one's gonna see it. So go ahead and stitch all the way around. Okay, now that everything is stitched all the way around, go ahead and push your exterior kind of out of the way a little bit and put two fingers into your opening and just kind of tug a little bit. That should give you the approximate seam allowance or it should allow the fabric to pull in at the approximate seam allowance and then go ahead and stitch this closed either by hand or by machine. Okay, so now this is all stitched. So I did, I don't know, maybe like a 16th of an inch or so seam allowance at the bottom. Just making sure I caught it all. I did, barely. <laughs> uh, I also wanted to let you know, I did fix my top stitching on this back piece. I didn't like it, so I redid it <laughs> um, in a previous step. Okay. Now let's turn this the right side out. And I only used one layer of fleece. You can use two, the pattern does call for two, but I wanted to see what it was like with just one. I actually really like it. It is a lot, it's a lot more structured when you use two, so. If you want a more structured um, book bestie, then definitely use two. So stick my book in here. Oh, this is so adorable. Look how cute this is. Ah, I love this. How cute. I love the coffin. Love the coffin. I think the coffin is a win. Hee <laughs> so, so cute. So thank you so much for joining me for yet another Marathon Society Sewing Marathon with the Carolina Little Stitches Book Bestie. So this is my version of it. There are so many options already included in the pattern. I couldn't help but add one more. Um, so thank you again to Kayla from Carolina Little Stitches for allowing us to use her pattern for this marathon. I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you learned something during all of this. Um, 
please make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I post new videos. I've been trying to do it a little bit more. Um, I'm trying to be uh, as helpful as possible in providing you with some tips and some really great tutorials on how um, to improve your sewing skills and how to sew even some of my own patterns. I hope you all have a wonderful day. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, please leave them below. Thanks so much.